Hello! Today's slide presentation is on techniques for obtaining a diagnostic quality full mouth radiograph series or full mouth image series. This slide presentation is intended for the dental assisting student. Here is a typical FMX survey or FMX series. It has 18 images and we want to review the anatomical structures in each radiograph so that you know what the dentist is looking for um, as we take and uh, look at evaluate our images. So typically there are periapical images posterior for a molar and a premolar in all quadrants and then four bite wing images. And then we also have anterior periapical images for the maxillary anterior teeth and the mandibular anterior teeth. Let's look at this upper right maxillary periapical image. The word periapical, in, if you recall, means around the apical area or apex. So a dentist wants to see the entire tooth from the apex to the crown and the surrounding area. So on this particular molar periapical image, we see the molars, we see a little bit of the maxillary tuberosity, and we definitely see around the apical area, even capturing some of the maxillary sinuses. In critiquing this particular image, the image receptor could have been moved a little more mesial to get um, an image of more of the maxillary tuberosity. You also see, as far as anatomical structures, uh, the enamel, the dentin, the pulp chamber, the pulpal canal, and any existing restorations, which this is very typical of our images, uh, but specifically with a periapical image, we have the apex shown of the teeth. Moving to the maxillary right premolar periapical image, uh, we see the premolars and we see the entire tooth from the root, the apex, to the crown, and the surrounding images. So that's very important in a periapical image. In reviewing our bite wing images, we have the teeth in occlusion and we can see anatomical structures uh, much like the periapical images of the enamel, the dentin, the pulp chamber, the pulpal canal. Uh, we see the bone level in both the bite wing and the periapical image. And with the bite wing, of course, we see the maxillary and mandibular teeth in occlusion. Moving to the anterior periapical images, again, we see the entire tooth from the root. This is the upper right canine from the root, the apex, to the crown. Now in this particular image it is difficult um, to get a lateral incisor and a clear image of the canine. So there are some FMX surveys which are 20 images in which the doctor will want to see the canine centered on a periapical image and then there are two images to capture the right central incisor and lateral incisor and the left central incisor and left lateral incisor and that would be duplicated or uh, uh, duplicated on the mandibular anterior periapical images. So either an 18 image or a 20 image and you're going to check that out in your dental office to see which one uh, the doctor likes to use for diagnosis and that is your typical FMX survey or FMX series. The techniques for obtaining images uh, are, are two basic techniques, either paralleling or bisecting. Let's look at the paralleling technique and the image receptor holder that may be used. This is a very popular one. There are lots of different XCPs, extension cone paralleling devices on the market. They usually consist of a, a ring, the rod, and the bite block. So uh, this is the posterior, this is color coded all yellow for posterior, blue for anterior. Then we have an extension cone paralleling kit 
for film if you're still using traditional film which is uh, a ring, a rod, and a bite block. And so the blue is for anterior in this particular uh, setup and the yellow for posterior. Let's review um, a couple of hints for assembling your XCP so that you make sure you get those diagnostic quality images for the sensor. Uh, you want to make sure that your bite block is in the middle of the ring. Once you assemble the bite block onto the rod and then the ring onto the rod. And you want to make sure you can see your uh, sensor in the middle of the ring, whether it's for posterior or anterior. You want to make sure that you have the plain side of the sensor to the PID. So that would be the opposite side of the cord plain to the PID. You want to make sure that the cord is going to be coming out of the patient's mouth and of course for infection control you want to use a barrier on your sensor and the XCP should be sterilized. The entire XCP should be sterilized in between patients. For the film um, it's very similar in that you want to make sure you see your bite block in your film in the middle of the ring. A little phrase that the as educators we use is dot to the slot because on a film you can see it down in this photo there is an identification dot on film and to have that dot to the slot there's a little slot here where the film is placed in to stabilize it in the bite block this means that that indicating uh, excuse me identification dot will be toward the occlusal or incisal surface and that's important so that the dot does not interfere with the periapical the bone around the um, apex uh, interfere with the doctor seeing that. So dot to the slot and of course plain to the PID so that you make sure you don't uh, end up with a reverse film. Let me go back to that FMX because I want to show you about the identification dot. So here's a dot. Now it doesn't really interfere with the apex but if a patient had bigger teeth that the doctor may want to be seeing um, deep into the alveolar process and that dot could interfere with seeing that area. So we always want dot to the slot so it ends up toward the occlusal surface. For bite wings it really varies from office to office but many offices if they're using film the, the doctors are just used to having the dot toward the floor of the mouth for the bite wing images. Now another important aspect of obtaining diagnostic images is patient positioning. We want to, as much as possible, we want the patient's head to be straight and the occlusal plane parallel with the floor. Other uh, important areas on the patient head would be the pa facial landmarks. So these are very helpful in obtaining diagnostic quality images whether you're using the paralleling technique or the bisecting technique. So we have the outer canthus of the eye and which is very helpful in aligning the PID for a posterior image whether it's maxillary or mandibular. We have the inner canthus uh, which is very helpful in aligning the PID for the premolar image, whether it's maxillary or mandibular. And let me go back, the outer canthus is for the molar image, maxillary or mandibular. We have uh, the tragus of the ear and the ala of the nose, which makes the tragus ala line. And that will be very helpful in positioning the PID for a maxillary posterior periapical. Commissures of the lip, also very uh, helpful in positioning the PID for posterior images and the inferior border of the mandible for mandibular periapical images. For anterior images, we have the nasion for certain images. 
the bridge of the nose and the apex or tip of the nose and the symphysis of the chin in positioning the pit. Now it's just the pointed part of the chin. This dexter happens to have a dimple, but the symphysis is the most the protruding part of the chin. So for the paralleling technique the image receptor placement is very important and it's the image receptor to the tooth to the PID relationship. So for paralleling, our x-rays that are being produced in the tube housing and they are coming out of the PID are going to be directed in a parallel manner because x-rays travel in a straight line to the image receptor. Therefore, we want the image receptor to be parallel with the long axis of the tooth. This is in the paralleling technique, which your XCP will help you to align the image receptor to the tooth and the PID to the tooth and the image receptor. This orange line represents the palatal uh, area so we can't have our image receptor right up against the tooth because we have palatine bones and we have the palate that we're dealing with for a maxillary. The mandibular you can get a little closer to but this paralleling uh, technique is very important so that you have a diagnostic quality uh, image. The pit position is very important and we'll talk about vertical angulation first. In most uh, maxillary images, the pit is going to angle down or in a plus position and I'll talk about what this plus means in just a moment. So whether you're using uh, in the paralleling position or later on we'll see the bisecting uh, technique, the paralleling technique, or the bisecting technique, your PID tends to angle down or has a positive vertical angulation, whether it's anterior or posterior. If it is a mandibular image, then the PID has a negative vertical angulation, which means that it points up, so for anterior or for posterior. Now, sometimes a patient may bite down on the bite block and the um, PID, or excuse me, the XCP may be angled really high, or for a mandibular, it may be angled really low. So you have to still, with an XCP, pay attention to that because it can. Um, influence your result of your image. So generally PIDs are down facing or pointing down for maxillary and facing up for mandibular. So this vertical PID positioning um, there is actually a little dial on the tube housing of the x-ray machine, the x-ray unit. And if it actually has a dial that has numbers like 0, it has a hash mark 10, 20, then 30, and you can see it a little closer on this photo here. So there are many dental radi or radiography books, dental radiography books, information online that will have a table and the table represents certain degrees for certain images. And it really is a good reference. Um, I'm going to leave that to you to find that. Uh, but I do want you to keep in mind that it is a really good reference because sometimes we have anatomical um, structures or and let me say it this way anatomical features of a patient's skull that don't follow these uh, tables and the degrees that they're um, uh, suggesting that you use so if you have a patient that has like really long teeth then you may have to give more or less uh, degrees to obtain a diagnostic image also, some patients' uh, you know, facial landmarks are not textbook, so you have to make adjustments. But once you get the uh, general 
theory and practice um, and taking images, practicing on mannequins, taking images, um, you will get th get this uh, these uh, theory and these techniques. Another position of the PID that's very important for a diagnostic quality image is the horizontal angulation. So we just looked at vertical. Now we're going to look at horizontal. So this would be a PID in the position, I'm going to say, across the face. So for a maxillary posterior, we're still going to use the outer canthus and for a molar and for a premolar maxillary inner canthus. The same for the mandibular. The outer canthus is very helpful for a mandibular molar and the inner canthus, even though you can't see it here. But what I want to point out in this photo is that you also have to look at where the contacts are on the teeth because we want to open those contacts. We don't want to have uh, overlapping or like a super blurry looking image. I call it a scary image when it's extreme overlapping. So our x-rays which travel in a straight line need to be directed through the contacts of the teeth. So you can see I have a cotton roll here in this dexter. That's because when this dexter bites on the bite block, this bite block and the way the patient's teeth are, um, it keeps shifting and I want it to be in this position. So I'm going to use a cotton roll to help hold that bite block in the position that I want as the operator in order to obtain a diagnostic quality image. Now let's look at the bisecting technique using some different type of image receptor holders. This is a very popular called a snap array and there's one for the sensor and one for the film. So this is the posterior setup and the anterior setup. One thing I like about this particular snap array is that it has a little blue line here which gives me an indication when this is in the patient's mouth the patient is biting here on this part of the bite block. I can see this blue line by having them smile really big or retracting their lip or cheek. And I can see this line. That tells me that's the edge of the sensor. So remember, we always want to encircle our sensor with the PID in order to also get an accurate image. So that those two um, items can be used uh, for the bisecting technique, these two image receptor holders. So the technique for bisecting our image receptor to tooth to PID relationship is that the PID, the, excuse me, the image receptor is sitting at an angle to the long axis of the tooth. And because of that, because of the holder we're using, or sometimes because of the position uh, or the shape of the patient's mouth, um, we can't place this straight parallel to the tooth. We just can't. So it's at an angle. So therefore, our x-rays need to be directed at an angle that is um, uh, bisecting the tooth and the image receptor. And that's where we have our bisecting technique. With our bisecting technique, our vertical angulation, we still can use the table that has uh, very nice uh, suggestions, I'm going to say it that way, for angulation. But you can see that now we have to use facial landmarks because we don't have a ring telling us where to place the PID. So the PID in this case would be the upper part of the PID for a maxillary anterior is at the uh, bridge of the nose and right over the apex of the nose. And for a maxillary posterior, we're still using outer canthus, tragus ala line, and the middle of it is about at the, um, or the end of it. You can't really see it on this angle, but it's right near the commissures. And then the mandibular anterior, symphysis of the chin, 
and mandibular posterior, the inferior border of the mandible, and the commissure of the lips, as well as if this is a molar, uh, we would be in line with the outer canthus. So those are our PID angulations for vertical angulation. Let's look at what happens if you have improper vertical angulation. This is how to avoid errors of foreshortening and elongation. So when we looked at that slide of the position of the image receptor to the tooth to the PID, this is very important. If we have proper positioning, accurate angulation, we're going to have an accurate image. If we have excessive angulation to the image receptor and the tooth, you're going to have a foreshortening of the image, which means it's going to be this little short squatty tooth, which doesn't represent the true length of the tooth. If you have insufficient angulation, you're going to end up with a very long stretched out tooth uh, on your image and probably no apex. Pit angulation or pit positioning, the horizontal angulation, is also important so that outer canthus and the tragus ala line, very important so that you have the teeth uh, avoiding overlapping. And then for a posterior, here you see a front view, or a premolar, inner canthus and the tragus ala line. Uh, and you can see here. Uh, the front view of what the PID positioning looks like. So horizontal angulation, very important for keeping contacts open. Here is the effects of horizontal angulation or opening the contacts. So no, whether you're using paralleling technique or bisecting, you want to make sure that the invisible straight line x-rays are directed toward uh, or through the contacts of the teeth in order to open those. So here's a molar and here's the premolar. So you always want the PID. You have to visualize the line coming from the contact and that's the same line that the PID should follow. Or you can say that it's the invisible x-ray traveling in a straight line needs to go right through the contacts of the teeth for open contacts. In conclusion, the techniques for diagnostic quality radiographs is the properly assemble the image receptor with the image receptor holder. You want to look at your patient, check their mouth before placing the image receptor. What are you going to be working with? Do you have um, a shallow or a deep palate? Do you have a shallow or a deep floor of the mouth? Do you have tori, oral tori, where you may have to adjust your receptor placement? You want to make sure that the patient's head is nice and straight with the occlusal plane parallel to the floor. You want to place the bite block of the XCP or the snap array on the teeth to be imaged right up against the occlusal and sizal surface of the teeth. So I'm going to repeat that. The bite block should be right up against the occlusal and sizal surface of the teeth that you are imaging. You want to avoid having the patient bite it into place because then you lose control over your positioning of the bite block. You want to ask the patient slowly while you stabilize the image receptor holder that is, and I'm repeating, up against the occlusal incisal surface of the teeth. For diagnostic quality radiographs, you want to place the PID at the correct extraoral position using facial landmarks, which is also the point of entry. And you want to place the PID at the correct angulation for both horizontal and vertical angulation. I thank you for your attention and I wish you the very best diagnostic quality full mouth radiographic images. Thank you.